in this lecture we'll be studying about the storage capacity of uh, distribution reservoir so uh, in the previous lecture i told you what a distribution reservoir is so basically what happens that when your water is treated and when it is uh, ready for distribution to the public or to the people it is uh, in some cases it is stored in a reservoir so in most of the cases basically so this is what a distribution reservoir looks like and you store the required amount of water in this and then from this it is supplied to public but the question is that how much amount should you store or what should be the volume capacity of this distribution reservoir so that storage capacity we are going to study today and that storage capacity is basically it is summation of these three capacities first is the ba balancing storage or equalizing or operating storage second is breakdown storage and the third is file storage let us learn about these three in detail starting with the balancing storage so balancing storage or equalizing storage it is the main and primary function of a distribution reservoir is to meet the fluctuating demand with constant rate of supply from the treatment plant so uh, in my previous lecture also i told you that uh, the demand is not constant throughout the day in the morning time during uh, like from 6 am to around 10 am the demand is very high because a lot of things you know bathing and everything happens during that time but during the night time when we are sleeping the demand is very less so the demand is variable even in the afternoons the demand is not much so this distribution reservoir has to first of all meet those requirements that it has enough capacity such that it can cater during the uh, maximum demand time plus uh, yeah so plus it can also cater to that when the demand is too high then what we are supplying i'll i'll explain you this point when we are further studying about this the optimum quantity of water required to be stored for this variable demand to provide a constant supply is known as the balancing reserve or balancing storage or equalizing storage or storage capacity so these are the four names given to the uh, this thing and what is important here is that a constant supply should be there so if the main aim of the distribution reservoir is to provide a constant rate of supply to the public now it should not happen that okay uh, if if uh, i want a constant rate of supply and i am building a, a distribution reservoir which it has a large capacity a very very large capacity then what is actually required is that feasible it's not first of all not feasible it's not economical as well right because unnecessarily you are building such a big distribution reservoir whereas it it will it will definitely uh, provide you a constant rate of supply definitely this is going to happen but there will be a lot of water which is going to be get stored in that which is not required every day right so we we'll learn what is the optimum quantity that is where this word optimum comes into the picture the this balancing storage is found using two methods first is mass curve method second is analytical solution we will learn both of these methods starting with the mass curve method so let us just take an example a mass diagram is the plot of accumulated inflow that is how much water is being supplied plus outflow how much is the demand so how much demand is there and how much supply is there the mass curve of supply line is therefore first of all drawn and is uh, superimposed by the demand curve the amount of balancing storage can then be easily determined by adding the maximum ordinates between the demand and the supply line so all these things i'll be explaining you with an example to construct such a diagram for particular water supply project we have to proceed as follows from past records determine the hourly demand how much is the hourly demand for for all the 24 hours this is hours right for typical days maximum average and minimum second is calculate and plot the cumulative demand against time and thus plot a mass curve demand we'll be studying what a mass curve uh, plot is and draw the cumulative supply also against the time to plot the supply line or mass curve of supply again this will be seen 
so this is just the procedure I'll just go through it fast and we'll come to the actual example now this is an example where let us say that we are we are finalizing a distribution reservoir for a population of 2 lakhs this is 2 lakhs which has a daily demand of 180 LPCD that is per capita demand is 180 so the math is not difficult we, can, we have to just multiply it so as to find the total demand uh, so as to find the total volume of water required so it is 2 lakhs into 180 that will be total volume of water required divided by 24 if you do you will get it because this whatever you are getting it will be liters per day right to convert it into liters per hour you will have to divide it by 24 and what you get is 1.5 million liters per hour so to cater this population of 2 lakhs with a daily demand of 180 LPCD every day you you have to supply 1.5 million liters per hour so every hour you will have to supply this much quantity of water let us just plot down our uh, day hours so it is going from 0 to 24 this is basically 0 to 1 okay. uh, it goes that way right then 1 to 2 2 to 3 I hope you got it right so this is the last one is 23 23 to 24 and this is 22 to 23 like that it goes percent of hourly flow expected now what is this see this is very interesting this is where the variable demand or the variation actually uh, comes into the picture 0 means it is 12 o'clock 0 to 1 so 12 o'clock in the night okay 12 o'clock in the night to 1 a.m the percent of hourly flow expected this is the 15 percent of hourly flow that is 15 percent of 1.5 million per liter is expected at this time then 1 to 2 again 15 percent of this is expected during 1 to 2 am 2 to 3 am again 15 percent 3 to 4 am it is 20 percent because some people wake up early so they need the, the, the demand for water rises from this point then it is 25 then 40 80 then 7 to 8 it is 120 percent of this so it goes beyond 1.5 million that is the that is the uh, demand okay this is what is needed during this time 180 percent 220 percent 220 percent then it goes on decreasing again it increases when it is uh, 3 to 4 in the afternoon then uh, till uh, it 6 to 7 in the evening it is 180 percent then again it goes on decreasing till the night time of 24 hourly flow required so basically what i'll be doing is that 15 percent of 1.5 i'll write whatever the answer is here so from 12 o'clock in the night till 1 am we need only 0.225 million liters per hour of discharge and let us see in the morning time how much do we require we require around 3.3 .3 million liters so almost almost double like more than double of this is required during the morning time right but what first but first thing as i told you distribution reservoir is made so that you can provide a constant supply so you don't have to according to this according to this supply that is uh, because you see that there is a variable supply here it is not 1.5 anywhere like right? yeah only here it is 1.5 other than that it is just varying right so you cannot constantly keep on varying your hourly flow required you have this fixed with you okay you this this amount is not going to change so neglecting this first hour we are going to provide 1.5 only even though here it is required 3.3 .3, but we are going to provide 1.5 let us see what happens cumulative hourly flow required is we are taking see this is required and this is provided required means it is demand required also called as demand 
provided is supply so this is demand and this is supply again this is demand this is supply so this is the cumulative of what we are taking of the demand thing and here we will be taking cumulative of supply thing at the end we are getting 36 million liters per day if you multiply this 2 lakhs into 180 you are going to get 36 million liters per day this is what you will be getting at the end right If I plot a graph of the number of hours here, these are the hours, uh, hours of a day and this is the volume of water that has been pumped till, till that time or that has been supplied till that time. So the, the supply from 0 to 1 is 1 1.5 then uh, at, at this point it is around 20 let's, where it is. 19.5 so you got it right this is the supply uh, demand and sorry this is the supply that we have pro plotted here and now we'll just superimpose the demand so this is the variable demand that you are seeing this 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 one that we have plotted okay so what do you get from this graph what what inference can you get from this graph first is that till this point okay till this point from this point to this point our supply curve is greater than the demand curve you see a supply curve is greater than the demand curve and after that our demand is more than supply so what do you mean by supply curve is more than demand curve it means that we are supplying more than what is what is required at that point and what do you mean by here it means that we are supplying less than what is actually required correct okay if I take the difference of these ordinates I am going to get somewhere I am going to get the maximum ordinate this is where I am getting the maximum ordinate and this is the excess supply which is 7.35 million liters what does that mean it means that your distribution if suppose your distribution reservoir capacity okay I'm just drawing here the distribution reservoir the capacity of this reservoir is only 6 million liters 6 million liters is the capacity of your distribution reservoir but at this point you see that your de demand is not that much coping up with your supply so there is an excess of 7.35 million liters it means what it means that the water is going to overflow from this you cannot so you at least have to have 7.35 million liters that much storage is required at least now let us see here what happens excess demand is 2.4 million liters so after even after getting exhausted with this much amount of water we still require more 2.4 million liters to cater to this demand so the actual storage capacity of this should be 7.35 plus 2.4 to cater for the entire day are you getting it first of all we plotted the maximum ordinate of the excess supply which came out to be 7.35 so minimum 7.35 has to be there otherwise if you provide less than this what will happen during during this hour of the day the water will flow out next at this point we are facing a deficit we are facing less amount of water by 2.4 million liters is required so we don't have that much it is after exhausting this 7.35 we are still requiring more 2.4 liters so this distribution reservoir should have this much more also correct so the total capacity total storage required is a plus b which is equal to 9.75 million liters this is nothing but your mass curve method let us see the next method which is the analytical solution method 
In this method, the cumulative hourly demand and cumulative hourly supplies are tabulated for all 24 hours. The hourly excess de of demand as well as the hourly excess of supply are then worked out. See, this is just the theory that is there. In fact, this analytical solution is much easier than what this theory looks out to be. We'll see that also. The summation of maximum of the excess of demand and the maximum of excess of supply will give us the required storage capacity. So what extra is uh, this much this much graph was already there I mean this much data was already there with us instead of plotting graph what we are doing is that we are adding two more columns in this which is excess supply column and excess demand column excess supply column is when you are uh, I told you that this is supply and this is demand right so when your supply is greater than your demand you plot it in excess supply column when your demand is when your demand is greater than your supply you plot it in excess demand column and then you just have to check which is the maximum one so 7.35 is the maximum one here and 2.4 is the maximum one in your excess demand same you just you know add both of them and you get the total storage total distribution uh, storage capacity of the distribution as well so this is I, I know this is much simpler but the, there are advantages of mass curve method as well because you can see the variation actually and whenever things are plotted on a graph it is much easier to capture the whole scenario rather than this tabulated data this is much easier but that mass curve method it gives you a larger picture basically let us move to the next capacity and uh, which is the breakdown storage so this also has to be added to your uh, previous balancing balancing storage that you have found here this is the this was the balancing storage basically and just right here balancing storage to this we have to add the breakdown storage plus we have to add the fire storage that will give you the total storage of your reservoir so let us see what the breakdown storage is breakdown storage is there for the emergency cases emergency storage which takes care of emergencies like failure of pump or uh, electricity not available or mechanical failures which will which is going to cause interruption in the supply so in the previous method we assumed that we are getting a constant supply of uh, 1.5 million liters per day per hour sorry but what happens if if there is a failure of pump so at that point of time you won't be able to supply to the public and then there will be reduce in the supply reduce in that supply this thing supply curve but your demand is same your demand is not going to change because your pump has failed or you don't have electricity your demand is going to remain uh, whatever it is right so in such cases you will have to have a breakdown storage the amount of provision to be made for this factor is very difficult to assess because it depends upon the frequency and extent of the failure and also upon the times required for carrying out the repairs so what is happening actually is that you have your distribution reservoir which is getting a constant supply of around 1.5 million liters per hour but and there, there is demand which is go, going at a variable rate right but some for some reason this 1.5 million per hour suddenly stops coming in this but your demand is still uh, there it is that has not changed so because of that your water is constantly it is reducing in levels just in case that the there is no excess demand then your supply just in case that there is enough water available also when this supply has been stopped at that point of at to cater the emergency situation at that point of time we need this balancing storage which is very, which is actually difficult to assess because uh, we don't know how many times the pump is going to fail so in general for this purpose a lump sum provision is provided it is about 25% of the total storage capacity 
or about one to two times the average of the supply may be considered as enough provision for accounting to this storage under all normal circumstances. If the supply lines of equipment are expected to be out of operation for long times, higher allowances have to be made. Right? This is this is a uh, but obvious. The third is the file storage. This provision takes care of the requirement of water required for extinguishing fire. So there is a large amount of water which is required for extinguishing fire if there is a fire outbreak. Therefore, and that water is also going to come from your distribution reservoir only. So of obviously this storage capacity also has to be added to your distribution reservoir capacity. In case of fire, sufficient amount of water must remain available in the reservoir apart from that water which we are supplying for the public utilities. Fire demand is generally 1 to 5 uh, LPCD. We had studied this uh, in, in the first modules or in the beginning stages of water supply engineering. What are various demands and the fire demand is 1.1 to 5 LPCD. At, and it needs to be discharged by three jet streams at a rate of 1100 liters per minute. So at this rate, by three jet streams, it should be discharged to dispose of the fire. Thus, if a provision of 10 hours of firefighting per day is desired, the volume of required to be stored is now 10 hours of firefighting. And we have a rate of 1100 liters per minute. So we have to convert this hours into minutes first. And there are three jet streams, so we multiply by three. So three into 1100 into 10 into 60, right? This is around, right? This is liters per day. So every day we need around 198 into 10 into 4, which is nearly equal to 2 million liters per day. So 2 million liters per day would be required in general cases. The storage for firefighting, in fact, is in is dependent upon the chances of fire breaks breakouts in the considered city. According to National Board of Underwriters of America, for population of six thousand to two lakhs and for a ten-hour fire every per day, water required is around ten thousand to five thousand liters per minute. Then uh, this is the discharge basically. Okay. For population less than 6000 and for 8 hours of fire, the water requirement is 4000 liters per minute. Population less than 6000 and for the 6 hours of fire consideration, water required is 2000 liters per minute. And for population less than 6000 and for a 4 hours of fire, water required is 1000 liters per minute. So, but if you see then these values are too high what is actually required for in for indian scenarios so for a developing country like india these these are too high and under normal conditions in india we may store about one to four liters per person per day as the necessary fire storage depending upon the importance of the city let us just solve a small numerical so we'll just add few things this uh, this was the data that we had seen in previous numerical the variation of the demand are per as per the time is given here and what they have told us is that consider in previous example the water supply is not continuous for the entire day but we are getting water supply from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. and from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. This happens in a lot of village areas and in a lot of rural areas that you do not get a continuous water supply throughout the day. Even in some urban areas, it, the scenario is like this. So we get, for first is that we are getting from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. which is 6 hours of water supply. And the second is 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Again, we are getting 6 hours of water supply. So in total we are getting 12 hours per day for 12 hours per day and population is obviously the same population won't change 2 lakhs and per daily demand is also same 180 LPCD. So if I multiply them what I get is 36 million liters per day right and what we are getting is 12 hours per day. The water supply is 12 hours per day 
what will be the per hourly demand then 36 million per day divided by 12 hours per day so it is 3 million liters per hour is what is required to cater for this much to cater for this population and 36 million per day supply is starting from 5 am right 5 to 6 so from this point it is starting and we are providing 3 million liters per hour of supply till 11 am we are providing this then there is a gap from 11 to 12 12 to 1 and 1 to 2 then again from 2 pm till 8 pm we are providing 3 million liters per hour of supply and then there is a gap okay if i and the cumulative hourly flow would be the same this is this is demand this is supply the demand will, is not going to change obviously the demand is not according to hours the demand is for the entire day so this is the same thing we are requiring 36 million per uh, per day so at the end of the day you must have been provided this much amount of water what about the hourly flow that is the supply so if i take cumulative of this supply thing this is the supply and this is demand right how much am i going to get this is the demand curve that i plotted let us see the cumulative supply curve so taking this as zero starting from zero three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen like that and then there's a gap of eleven to twelve twelve to one again one to two starting from the 18 because till this point till this much point we have provided with 18 million liters of water to the public after that again we are providing at a rate of 3 million liters per hour so 21 24 till 36 so at the end of 8 pm we have provided 36 million liters which was required per day so this is how that supply graph will look starting from 5 am till 11 am and then this this gap is there and then from 14 that is 2 pm till 8 pm we have this much just looking at this graph uh, and as i told you the reservoir balancing reservoir storage is nothing but max maximum of excess supply and maximum of excess demand so when this supply curve is below your demand curve it means that there is excess of demand and when the supply curve is above your demand curve it means there is excess of supply right so you'll have to see that which year also you have excess of demand and year also you have some somewhere you have excess of supply right you will have to see which one is maximum which which demand of these two is maximum which supply of these two is maximum then you will have to add them up so we'll follow the analytical method also here right so as you can see here we are getting a excess demand of 1.35 correct then there is excess supply from this point to this point which is which are these ordinates so i am nothing but i have just calculated these uh, intervals between here in the, between the supply curve and the demand curve and i have noted it down here then again there is a excess of demand of 1.2 at this point then till this point there is excess of supply and after that we don't have anything so from excess of demand which is maximum this one is maximum and from excess of supply which is maximum 4.35 is maximum right so 4.35 happens to be here from 8 to 9 and uh, excess demand is this one 1.35 million liters so the balancing capacity is a plus b which is 5.7 millions per liter and then this will be added with the breakdown storage and the fire storage okay so this was a short numerical and uh, thank you so much